This morning, the first self-collection kits for cervical cancer have been shipped to doctor's offices as a possible alternative to pap smears. I find this incredibly curious. Dr. Darian, to be clear, this is not an at-home test. This can only be done in a doctor's office at this point. How does this work? Well, this is in addition to cervical cancer screening. It's a very common cancer, most often caused by the HPV virus or the human papilloma virus. And so the point of this swab is it can be done in a doctor's office or it will be done in a clinical office, whether that be urgent care, primary care, or GYN. And the goal is to allow the patient in a more comfortable setting to self-screen, to self-swab. It is a vaginal swab as opposed to the provider doing it. And this is supposed to increase accessibility. Right now they're doing testing and hopefully it will be available now for patients at home but this is answering a bigger problem, which is the lack of accessibility to OBGYNs. More than 36% uh, of counties in the United States mm -hmm. don't have a functioning OBGYN. So this is a necessary addition, but obviously a sign of a bigger problem. That sounds like a positive development, just the more access, but what are some of the other pros and cons to this development? Yeah, so the pros, number one, are accessibility. It's also allow more patients to be more comfortable with doing these tests. And when you think about this, again, there's so many cases of cervical cancer, more than 50% are due to people not being up to date in their screenings. And so being able to have a screen that can process in a similar amount of time as a pap smear can be helpful for more people to know their status. And then as far as cons, uh, you know, obviously there is user error, which is one of the reasons why it can only be done in provider offices so that you can get an uh, education on how to do it and also education on the result. And the FDA is still deciding on whether or not the effectiveness can match up to a pap smear. My personal opinion, it probably won't match up to a pap smear, which is kind of the gold standard. That's when we look at cells and identify cancer-causing cells. The uh, screening for the self-swab is similar to the self-swab that a doctor would do. And that is seems to be comparable between whether or not a patient does it or a doctor does it. Okay. Now, when we look at these numbers, over 11,000 new cases of cervical cancer, yeah. 4,000 deaths each year. What can women do to reduce the risk? Uh, number one, understanding. When you look at the reasons why people don't get their screenings, many of them don't know that the screening, what the screening recommendations are, and they can be confusing. So just in short, for anyone between the ages of 20 and 65 who has a cervix, it's recommended that you get screened every three to five years, and that can include either a pap smear where they look at cells or an HPV swab, and then also getting vaccinated against HPV. This is a vaccine that can prevent cancer, and it's something that I always try to educate patients about, and we've seen in studies that it's highly effective. So talking to your provider about vaccination and screening is really important to reduce your risk. Mm -hmm. And those screening recommendations have changed in my lifetime, so there's a reason people are confused about it. Yes, yeah. absolutely, so screenings. it's important to make sure you take time to understand what is indicated for you. Yeah. Dr. Darian, thank you as always. Of course.